we have a major course called Hermeneutics, Old New Testament. It's NT123. This is the core course in our MDiv curriculum for principles for interpreting the Bible. And it feeds into both our Old and New Testament courses because obviously we're going to be interpreting books of the Bible and it feeds into our systematic theology and practical theology courses because we interpret the Bible for one thing to communicate it, that's your practical theology emphasis, and to build sound doctrine, build conclusions about what the Bible as a whole teaches, that's your systematic theology. This course feeds into all of those things we have to cover a lot of different areas. We have to cover the area of basic assumptions. What is the Bible? Who are we? Sin is one of the factors there. And if we're saved from sin, what effect does that have on our reading of the Bible? Who is God who is speaking to us in the Bible? We also have to deal with how technical aspects of how do you deal with a particular verse? How do you handle the original languages? What are you supposed to be looking for? What are you supposed to be looking at for in terms of word meanings, in terms of grammatical constructions? How do you put that together into understanding a whole paragraph of text? How do you treat that paragraph within the context of a whole book? So there's a lot of pieces that go in. We also have an emphasis on the Christ-centered character of the Bible. If you read Luke 24, you will see that Christ makes some amazing claims about how the Old Testament is looking forward to him. So we have to ask ourselves, if we're followers of Christ, what does that mean? How do we work that out in terms of seeing the implications of what Christ himself claims about the Old Testament? How do we see the Old Testament as pointing forward to Christ? So there's those aspects, and there's also aspects of dealing with what is the nature of meaning? What is the nature of truth? What about uh, the historical critical method which doesn't believe in the supernatural? Those things have had an impact on the history of biblical studies. I have students in my class who are going to be picking up commentaries and using those commentaries as part of their study of text. Well, those commentaries are not all equally trustworthy. What do you look for? What do you have to filter out? So we have to discuss that kind of thing as well. And we have to discuss the progress of revelation. That is, that God, though he has a plan from all eternity, he works it out in time. And so what is later in time, both in his deeds, what he does, delivering the people of Egypt from Egypt, calling David to be king. Those things are building on earlier things that he's done, and they're looking forward to the coming of Christ. So we've got to appreciate that time element. So we have a whole section on interpretation and time. History, what is God's plan for history? Talking about how that impacts the interpretation of individual passages. It does impact it. I use the example of David and Goliath because it's such a familiar example, usually used as a, a moral example. Look at how brave David was. Well, David is not just any ordinary Joe. He's the anointed king of Israel. And the king of Israel is established by God to point forward to the great king who is coming, the descendant of David, namely Christ himself. So David's actions in that story, his defeat of evil, are kind of prelude, are kind of foreshadowing of the coming of Christ and his massive defeat of Satan and of death. So we talk about those kind of things so that people don't end up reading or preaching on the Bible in a one-dimensional way.